Hey friends, so as many of you know, I am a huge fan in teaching pendulums, especially to beginners. I think it's really helpful for understanding the different ways that we can add momentum to the poi. But what I'm not always so good at is teaching basic transitions in and out of them. Well, how complicated could that be? You're about to find out. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, bringing you poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today we're doing a deep dive into pendulums to hopefully help make them a little bit more useful to you. And before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these different amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So pendulums, they're really great tools for having kind of a low impact way to start learning things like timing and direction and switching back and forth between it and everything. But once you get into the realm of traditional poise spinning, there is that question of how do you get back and forth between all those different options and getting back to your pendulums and everything. Well, I recently had an excuse to go through and uh, try and kind of codify how I think about transitions in and out of pendulums, and you all get to be the uh, beneficiaries of this little deep dive. So to give you all a quick overview, I would classify there being basically two ways that you can get in and out of pendulums. And uh, in my mind, I've labeled them as being an in-spin and an anti-spin entry, even though when it comes to pendulums, I don't think you can really have in-spin or anti-spin per se, but just go with me on it for right now until I can come up with better words. So for both the entries and the exits that we're learning today, we're starting off with just a static spin as well as a basic pendulum where the hand is basically not moving at all. And that's because it's just a great microcosm of how all of these elements kind of converge into one. Um, I would say that it is good to be thinking ahead in terms of if this is an idea that applies to static spin, oh, does it apply to in-spin flowers? Does it apply to weaves, etc.? And yes, almost certainly, the idea does apply in both of these cases. So get those gears turning on that sooner rather than later. Okay, so we're gonna start this off by doing just a regular old clockwise static spin in wall plane here. And I want you to pay really, really careful attention to this spot over on your left-hand side where the poise is starting to come up. That's the moment where you're starting to feel a little bit of that gravity grabbing onto it and everything, right? Now, all you really have to do to drop into a pendulum here is you go ahead and just don't give it that little bit of oomph that it needs to get over your hand and everything, right? Now, to get back to your static spin from here, when it's dropping over on your right hand side, you can just uh, give it that little bit of oomph that you took away from it before. So you can think of it as over on the left hand side, you take that momentum away, and on the right hand side, you give it back. On the left hand side, you take it away, and on the right hand side, you give it back. Now, of course, we can also reverse the direction that we're doing on this too. So when I take away my momentum on the left-hand side, I can now give the momentum back coming off the left side. See how I did that? As the poise coming up here and everything, I just let it drop back and forth. And instead of taking that additional momentum off of the right-hand side, i.e. right there and pulling it around, instead I'm taking it off the left side right here. So when it goes down, I pick up the momentum and I let it come back around. That way it winds up going counterclockwise as it comes out of uh, that pendulum, right? And then to go back to the pendulum, I take away the momentum on the right hand side and it can get back to clockwise by adding the momentum on the right side. So if you want to think of this being an exercise, I can take away the momentum on the left, add the momentum on the left, I can take away the momentum on the right, I can add the momentum on the right. And in that way, I go back and forth between clockwise and counterclockwise for that basic static spin, right? Um, of course, you can also think of a version of this wherein you are kind of picking up the poi as you go into that pendulum, right? I kind of like this approach in that it sets this expectation that the static spin happens on the lower half and the pendulums happen on the upper half, which is going to be really, really handy for the next entry and exit that we're gonna play with. So the whole reason I think of this as being an in-spin entry into a pendulum is that basically you're working with the momentum of the poi and you're working with gravity. And you really don't have to do that much work to get in and out. 
But there is another approach to getting in and out of these pendulums that does involve fighting the gravity a little bit, or at least finding a kind of tricky timing on that. So this is what I would refer to as the anti-spin entry and exit. Here's how it works. So again, we're gonna start going clockwise here and everything, and rather than robbing the poi of its momentum over on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna do it on the right side. How exactly does that work? Well, let me show you. Uh, so after the poi goes past that top spot right here, I'm almost gonna imagine that I'm gonna stall it off to my side, and as I do so, boom, I let my hand come up, and I just let the poi swing back and forth underneath that hand. And then to go back, I wait until the poi is over on my left-hand side, and I drop my hand down, I let it pass by the poi head, and it drops the poi into spinning clockwise again. Tricky, let's see that again. So, as the poi is passing by that top point, I let it stall off to my right, and as my hand passes by it, I just let the poi swing back and forth underneath that hand and everything. As the poi goes over to my left hand side, I drop my hand past it, and that pulls it into a clockwise static spin once again. So just like our in-spin transition back and forth between our pendulums, in order to maintain the direction of our static spin, we have to do our entries and exits on opposite sides. So in order to start the pendulum, I go over to the right-hand side with the poi, and in order to get back into that clockwise static spin, I do that little stall over to the left, right? So it's right to get into the pendulum, left to get back to clockwise. What if I want to switch it up? Well, it just involves going back along the same route. So I do that stall out to the right to get to my pendulum, and then once again off the right, I sneak my hand past it, and boom, I wind up with my poi spinning around counterclockwise. So we could totally do an exercise based around this too, that I go into my pendulum off to the right-hand side, and I come back down on the right. I go to the pendulum off on the left, come back down on the left. Do you see how I'm entering that pendulum up high and I'm switching the direction of the poi every time I come back down into that static spin? Which, this in and of itself looks pretty cool, I think. And of course, you might be noticing, we can easily mix and match between these two things. Let's say that I want to do an in-spin entry into my pendulum, and then I want to come back down with the anti-spin exit. How about that? Or vice versa. I can do my anti-spin entry into that top pendulum, and then I can do an in-spin drop back into the pendulum. Uh, it all depends on what you want to do here. Uh, you could turn this into an exercise of going back and forth between the anti-spin transitions to pendulum, or you can go back and forth between uh, in-spin transitions to pendulum and static spin, or you can mix it up and decide to come up with a combo that lets you do both just as easily, you know? It, it, it's totally up to you. But the thing I do want you to get out of this is to realize that you've got multiple options in terms of getting in and out of those pendulums. And of course, it gets super interesting when we put the other hand into play now, because uh, I could just as easily decide that I'm gonna do one transition on one side and the other transition on the other side. So for instance, I could do anti-spin with the right and in-spin with the left, and and boom, wind up with them um, doing pendulums and opposites across the top and come back down into my uh, three beat weave that I started from. Let me show you that again. Boom, into my pendulums and boom, back down. I'm just applying those techniques there, right? And of course, there are so many places that you could take this in terms of flowers, in terms of, you know, different variations on like body tracers and weaves and everything. It's just a matter of where you want to take it. And I think that this is a really useful thing to have in your toolbox because especially when I was first playing around with pendulums, I was only aware of the in-spin variety of it. And specifically when I got into learning these uh, kind of butterfly 1.5s in wall plane and everything, I realized that there was something slightly different happening as I was getting into that top pendulum than when I was doing a 1.5 weave here over in wheel plane, right? It's the difference difference between that in-spin and that anti-spin entry, and it creates a lot of possibilities for getting in and out of these. And it should be said, this is a lesson that I adapted from something that I have on my Patreon called the Flow Circle. That is a weekly lesson that I give to my Patreon supporters that, you know, is not supposed to take up any more than about, say, 15 minutes a day, but will help you drill basic skills with poi and everything, and uh, help you build your skills over time. 
So go and check that out on my Patreon and see if the flow circle is right for you. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe so that other people can find it and learn from it. And a big thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these amazing people right here. These are my flow patrons over on Patreon and they join the other Patreon supporters who are listed down in the description and everything in making this video and all the videos on this channel possible. If you would like to sign up to support the work that I do, which I would really appreciate, uh, you can do so by heading on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future. Plus which, sometimes I upload some great behind the scenes stuff or some extras, you never know. So yeah, clearly I'm a big fan of pendulums and all the things that they can help you do as a poi spinner, as well as understanding the mechanics of getting in and out of them. Uh, what are some of those tricks for you? What, what are some of those like underutilized gems in the poi world? Let me know down in the comments and let me know if this lesson helped you on your poi journey and if you got stuck, where you got stuck and how I can help you get past it, yeah? Awesome, thanks so much for watching and have yourselves a good one. Peace.